This is the NBC Television Network. can't believe the kind of day I've had. Oh. Norman, hmm? my hands are getting a little tired. Well, if you did this more often, they'd be in better shape. <laughs> anyway, I'm sitting there hunched over my typewriter all day. Finally, I get an inspiration. I go to type, and my S isn't working. <laughs> well, maybe you should have gotten up and walked around. <laughs> my S. S, as in... <laughs> well, what's the difference? It wasn't working. So anyway, I take my broken S in to get fixed. And then a typewriter guy turns out to be a real wit. He says, he won't be ready till Saturday, around X. <laughs> oh, I'm Ari. <laughs> so, what uh, were you writing about? Uh, just about how men's attitudes towards women have changed. How we no longer think of women as servile. Eileen, are you going to rub? You're going to dig for gold back there. <laughs> That's better. So, what do you want to do tonight? Oh, well, I was going to stay home and write an article about men, but my A was broken. <laughs> Not a chance. Come to... on, you little dipstick. Tell me who's playing at the school dance. Julie, can't you see our mother here awaiting our traditional hellos? <laughs> Hi, Mom. So what is the name of the group? Mom, I've been putting up with this all day. Would you please make him tell me who's playing at the dance? Honey, how can I make him? Pull the hair out of his head. <laughs> Mom, now I am the treasurer of the school's entertainment committee, so this argument's way below me. He's got $500 of my school's money. I say we frisk him. <laughs> now that's a law for you, the Bill of Rights. But, can you... Yes. Remember the story about the lion who had a thorn in his foot? Well, I don't. <laughs> because I have this tremendous headache. So why don't you go into the kitchen, make yourself a sandwich, and let's see how long we can go without saying the word mom. But mom... Not so good. <laughs> let's try again, shall we? <sighs> they really can be a blessing. <laughs> <laughs> hmm. <sighs> oh, that's better. <laughs> Mom! Ah! He let Eli go pick up the money for the band. So? So? Mom, have you ever been in a quiet room with Eli? If you put your ear to his head, you can hear the ocean. <laughs> Julie, look, he can handle it. All he has to do is go to the bank and withdraw the money. <sighs> yes, Julie, I really think you're overreacting. Okay, fine. No one ever listens to the daughter. <laughs> but when the whole school's at our door with pitchforks and clubs, just remember, when he was five, it was me who said donate him to science. <laughs> I guess she didn't know how he'd turn out. <laughs> you do have a band, don't you? Oh, Mom, it's not just a band. It's... Morning breath. Ah. <laughs> Look to the hottest new band around. You know, Norman, if this band is as good as Matt says, it could make a great interview for you. Eileen, there's one thing that being turned down by every major publication in the free world has taught me. 
And that's the only thing lower than an unpublished writer is a bunch of loud kids who know three chords and can spit. You really think that's lower? <laughs> now that must be Eli. Oh, hang on, Ange. I think he's here. Prepare for a scandal. <laughs> Come on, Eli. I want Julie to see this. I don't know, Ann. He doesn't look proud, but why would he? <laughs> Hold on. <laughs> All right, Eli. This is your big moment. Now, give me the money. It's okay. You can give it to me. <laughs> you do have it, right? <laughs> All right, Eli. Way to go. You know, some people didn't trust you, but I did. I did. What a fool I was. What happened to the money? I don't know. All right. Let's just go back a second. Now, you went to the right bank. Come on. What do I look like? <laughs> you went to the right bank. Yep. Okay. Did you go to the teller's window? Yeah, sure. Otherwise, they couldn't get the money. But you didn't get the money. Oh. <laughs> Okay, look, remember when we put the money in there? They gave us a little secret number to show that it was our account, so we'd get the money out. Now, did you give them that number? Yeah, I had to have that or else they wouldn't give me the money. But they didn't give you the money. Nope. <laughs> okay, now, did you give them the right number? Well, actually, I was worried for a while. I lost my books with the account number on them. When? Well, don't worry. See, I put it on the bulletin board saying that I needed that number to get our $500 out. Oh. And you know what? Two days later, the books are on my doorstep. The only thing I can't figure out is what happened to our money. So, how's things with you? <laughs> Eli, what are we going to do? Now, we need that $500 to pay the band. All my money's tied up in municipal bonds. <laughs> oh, so this is your fault. <laughs> Eli, we need an alternate plan here. I, I guess basically we just need to find a cheaper band by Saturday now. now. I got 20 bucks. How much you got? Okay, um, we've got 20 bucks. And, of course, you'll get the exposure of playing at a high school dance. Now, um, you, uh, you must be O'Leary and the guys. Was that, was that your idea, O'Leary? No, it was the guy's. <laughs> so, you're the uh, Rabinowitz sisters. <laughs> Meg, Molly, and Polly. Mm, hi. You know, I can't help but notice that you ladies don't seem to have any musical instruments. What exactly do you do? Well, we pick a guy out of the audience and beat him. Let me guess. The belly butters. <laughs> Let's see what you got. It's too bad. I really hope they'd be good. <laughs> I don't know, Matt. From where I sit, it looks like the Rabinowitz sisters. <laughs> but you saw the bands that came in here? They were the dregs of humanity. The living dead. What are we smiling at? <laughs> Do they still have those skeletons in the bio lab? Sure. What are we smiling at? <laughs> I think we found our band. Ladies, 
you looking fantastic? But what can I say that hasn't already been said by hundreds of panting men with no last names? Wait, wait. that's my woman you're talking about. Oh, really? Pleased to meet you. Are you, uh, Bobby, Joey, Frankie, or, uh, Hakim? <laughs> Listen, Corp, we've been talking, and no one's ever heard of this band you got, the dregs of humanity. You know, I almost hope this band does stink. Because I know a lot of people in this room who'd love to see you swing. <laughs> oh, so sweet of you to say so. <laughs> Listen, I gotta go check on the band. Ladies? Angela? <laughs> Light. What a bozo. Who's our king? <laughs> Katie lies. Everything set? Matt, I'm scared. Hey, who wouldn't be? They're gonna kill us if we don't pull this thing off. <laughs> don't worry, I got a taxi waiting out back. <laughs> now, uh, do you remember what to do? I think so. This is lead guitar. <laughs> this is drums. <laughs> and bass and keyboards. Perfect, perfect. Now, is all the lighting set? Right. And the music we bought from Manuel's band is all queued up. Um, just one thing, Matt. See, if we have to make a run for it, I'm attached to these guys. <laughs> Do they count as passengers or baggage? You lie. If it comes to that, you won't make it to the taxi anyway. Well, the culture lovers are getting restless. I'm on. Quiet, 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 quiet. Thank you. Honored chaperones. Dateless nothings. <laughs> welcome. Welcome to Van Buren High School Homecoming Dance. Hey, get off. Thank you. <laughs> now, I would like to introduce a band to you, the likes of which you've never seen. Who are they? Where do they come from? Why would they play here? Who cares? <laughs> because these boys can rock and roll. Ladies and gentlemen, I give you... The Dregs of Humanity! this thing off. Three encores. Oh, my rope runs for a month. <laughs> it's a small price to pay, Eli. Small price to pay. Hey, this is one to tell the grandkids. I'm almost sorry to see it end. <laughs> Great news. Norman sold an article. Well, well, I haven't quite sold it yet. Oh, Music Press is really interested. They want it for their next issue. And the best part is you can help. Oh, really? <laughs> 
Indeed. <laughs> well, you can uh, imagine my delight in the prospect of helping Norman get his career off the ground. <laughs> how, uh, how may I be of service? Well, he would like to interview the dregs of humanity. <laughs> If he can get an exclusive, then he'll get a cover story and he's on his way. Norman, I, I wish you felt close enough to me to ask me yourself. I told you. Yes, well, 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 you see, I thought if we all shared the news together, no one would feel left out. <laughs> Very thoughtful. But why waste your time? I mean, the group only knows three chords and how to spit. <laughs> Did you take that seriously? <laughs> uh, you don't really know me at all, do you? Oh, I think I do. <laughs> Honey, could you at least try for me? Oh, okay, I'll, I'll set it up. What? I know, I know they're busy, but uh, I think they'll do it for us. Oh, that's wonderful. Great, great. Can you bring them here? Uh-uh, no, no can chance. do. Huh. <laughs> I mean, the band's real weird, and you can only see them underneath that, that spooky lighting. So, listen, I'll tell you what, we'll meet you at the gym, shall we say, eight-ish? Great. Come on, Eileen, I want to get my typewriter from the shop. Thank you, Matthew. Thanks, Matt. I owe you one. Norman, you owe me nothing. <laughs> Matt, um... I know how easy it is to get wrapped up in these things, but, um, I gotta tell you, see, these guys don't talk. <laughs> Eli, don't worry about it. The lead singer will do all the talking. Matt, the lead singer is my left leg. <laughs> now listen, we attach a speaker to his chest, throw that stupid cape over it, and you'll just answer all the questions through a microphone. What'll I say? Anything. I mean, you read those heavy metal magazines. Use your imagination. This is your fantasy. And Norman's article. And if this thing blows up, the town's going to be too busy laughing at him to worry about us. <laughs> Norman, say hi to the dregs of humanity. Men? Now, uh, that's Graves on keyboard over there. That's Wild Wolfgang back there on bass. Bones ears on drums. <laughs> Bones lives in the fast lane. <laughs> this, of course, is uh, Doomstone, our lead singer and uh, talker of the group. Ah, back off, geek. <laughs> Sorry. Sorry. Who's this interview for? Uh, Music Press. Let's get out of here. Oh, no, 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 wait, uh, uh, tomb, Tombstone. Um, th this really means a lot to me. Uh, let me tell you something. Uh, you and I are a lot in common. We're both... <laughs> young men on the move up the charts with a bullet. I think we can do each other a lot of good. All right, let's do it, writer man. All right. Uh, now, we'll cover your roots and your music later. What our readers really want to know about is life on the road. What's it like? Is it really as grueling and, and lonely and miserable as they say? How do you guys handle it? Equal portions of booze, broads, and brawls. <laughs> That's great. What about the girls? What are they like? Who cares? They're objects of lust. We cast them aside. We're the dregs. It's fascinating. But you know what we really like to do? Yes? Check into some hotel and destroy. <laughs> we are the dregs. Wolfgang, Bones, Graves, Tombstone, a rock and roll embodiment of everything nihilistic. 
Did this band turn their back on society or did society turn its back on them? Either way, if art reflects the times, then we have a chilling image in the mirror. We are the dregs, said Tombstone, his eyes gleaming with life. <laughs> he made me believe it. Now that's right. <laughs> article truly great thank you thank you mm. coffee for the author <laughs> oh matthew these boys I, I don't think it's wise for you to hang around with them oh mom it's just a stage act believe me i see right through them <laughs> oh norman your article just hit the stands everyone in town is talking about the dregs matthew i want to meet phones <clears throat> Just to talk, Mom. <laughs> Get him for me. Charlie, I don't even know where they are. Well, find them. The kids from Chester A. Arthur High School want them for a big dance. Julie, they did this as a favor for me. They don't work for peanuts. They'll pay $750. Oh. <laughs> Believe me, they're not interested. They're just another band. You'll probably never hear another word about them. Two thousand dollars? <laughs> no, I'm sorry. Uh, it's not worth it to the guys. But listen, I do have two fat guys. Hello? <laughs> this is amazing. Four skeletons getting calls from all over town. <laughs> Eli, it is one of the best things we have ever done. Let's revel in it. <laughs> See, Matt, maybe we should go into marketing. You know, t-shirts, posters, caskets. <laughs> now, come on, Eli. Now, we were lucky on this one. They say we just let the guys retire. Call it the end of an era. Hello, thank you for calling the Burton residence. Yes, I know the dregs. They're thinking of retiring. Ex ex excuse me? Can, can I get back to you? What was that sucker's name? <laughs> the Palladium. Oh. <laughs> They want the guys to do a concert for uh, $20,000. <laughs> Matt, what are we going to do? I say we go for it. <laughs> in charge of the entertainment for the school dance. Eli lost the money to pay the band. 
so Matt had to do some creative thinking. He got four skeletons from the biology lab and introduced them as... The Dregs of Humanity! was a bigger hit than anyone expected. Norman did an interview with the group, and with that, plus word of mouth, offers start rolling in. What was that sucker's name? The Palladium. They want the guys to do a concert. For, uh, $20,000. Matt, what are we gonna do? I say we go for it. And now, the dregs of humanity. The saga continues. Twenty thousand dollars, you know, Eli. When I was a kid, just starting out, I never dreamed I'd make this kind of money till I was a junior. <laughs> but when the Palladium finds out the dregs are skeletons, we'll be lucky to get half that. <laughs> Listen, Eli, we're not going to use the skeletons. It's too risky. Listen to this: we hire four guys off the streets, give them twenty bucks, some cheap wine, dress them like the dregs, and send them off to the Palladium. <laughs> But they'll get booed off stage. Yep. <laughs> we, just, we just make sure we get the money up front. Dregs never work again, and we're in Rio with 20 grand. <laughs> Hi, guys. I just came by to say thanks for arranging my interview with the band. My check from Music Press came in. You know what I bought? Gum? <laughs> well, I'm in too good a mood to let anything bother me. My writing career is getting off the ground. Things are beginning to happen for me, so I splurged and bought a car. It's amazing what you can get for $300 if you shop carefully. Yeah, I mean, for that kind of money, you can buy yourself a pretty decent bicycle. <laughs> well, laugh at this. Rolling Stone magazine wants me to do a follow-up interview with the dregs in depth. Watch my lips. Rolling Stone. <laughs> When can we set up this little interview? I'm sorry, Norm. I don't think the guys are interested, you know? <gasps> what do you mean, not interested? This is Rolling Stone. This is me. Frankly, Norm, they thought you were surface. What do you mean, surface? I probed, I prodded, I was provocative. What do I care what you think? <laughs> Wait a minute. Who are you to make their decisions? This could be really big. Don't you think you should at least call and run it by them? I will. I will. I don't see you dialing. <laughs> Trust me. I don't know, Matt. He's starting to get suspicious. Oh, Eli, don't worry about it. All we have to do is just stall him to the Palladium concert. Now, where did you put the costumes? In your room. I hung them up behind the curtains so uh, no one could see them. It's me, Donatelli! Get off of me! All right, Burton, you're gonna fry for this. I don't care how you do it, but I want that crowd dispersed. No problem, sir. Just toss your sock out there and let nature take its course. You got nothing to be smug about, you little mugwump. This is a clear violation of your lease. I'll have you living in the gutter. By nightfall, you'll be burning your hair for heat. Please, sir, pop a breath mint. And tell us, what exactly is the violation? Disturbing the peace of my building, causing a riot on the premises, and worst of all... Yeah! Surely, Mr. Donatelli, this can't be the first time a crowd has tried to kill you. Look, you little ringworm. I know you got a rock group living in here. I hate rock and roll. Now get that human dog poo out of my building. I'm sorry that you feel that way, Mr. Donatelli, because I was just going to make you a business proposition. But why would you want to be rich? 
You already have everything a man with no birth certificate could hope for. <laughs> Matt, you're not going to cut him in. Eli, I have no choice. All right, Mr. Donatelli, look. The dregs are playing the palladium. After that, they're going to be red hot. So, how would you like to own a piece of the band? Matt, I thought you were going to sell that to Norman. A pox on Norman. <laughs> He's not one of us. I want to be rich. What's it going to cost me? Gee, I don't know how much 20% of one of the hottest rock groups is worth today. <laughs> I've got no business, man. Um, why don't we just say six months free rent for my mother? Done. I'll have a contract drawn up. <laughs> know why I'm laughing? But are you the blood, sir? No. It's because I beat you. Ha! You just sold me a piece of a million dollar rock group for six months free rent in this dump. And you call yourself smart. <laughs> Let's change the deal. Not a chance. I've dreamt of this moment. Finally. Me, Lou Donatelli, outsmarted a couple of kids. Gee, Matt, he's an idiot. <laughs> yes, Eli? It's not pretty, is it? <laughs> I'll tell you, Matt, I can't wait until the Bladium concert is over. Oh, Eli, it's smooth sailing from here. Just keep thinking, $20,000. Gentlemen, follow the fat, slimy man. He's the new bass player. Thank you. My name is Howard Rosenberg. I represent Motels International. Oh, yeah. Come ah, right in. Come yes. right in. Thank you. I, uh, suppose you'd like the dregs to be your official spokesman. Ah, uh, well, yeah, actually... Yeah, well, I'm, I'm sorry, but... The boys are booked. I mean, they're already making more money than they know what to do with. So. Oh, I am so glad to hear that, yes. Mr. Burton. You see, we're suing the dregs of humanity for five million dollars. <laughs> Rosenberg, you're suing us for five million because the dregs trashed your motel rooms from coast to coast. Yes, that's correct. <laughs> Okay, and, uh, Mr. Graham, Mr. Graham? <laughs> you're suing us for 2.5 million, contending that you're the band's original manager. Yeah, and I have the papers to prove it. <laughs> <laughs> I'll bet you do. <laughs> and, Mrs. Wembley, you and your daughter, Peace, are suing for 1 million claiming that Tombstone is the father of her newborn son, Earthwind. Oh, how I loved him. <laughs> oh, how I'm nauseous. <laughs> and, of course, O'Leary. You and the guys are suing for 20 million, saying that the dregs stole one of your songs. <laughs> Oh, really, O'Leary? How'd you think this is taking it a bit far? Was this your idea? No, it was the guy's. <laughs> okay, this brings us to a grand total of $28.5 million. Will you take a check? <laughs> what are you so worried about? When we show up in court this Friday with the skeletons, those people are going to look pretty stupid. Especially the one with the baby. <laughs> I know the dregs are in your room. I want bones. No, 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 no. <laughs> you just can't talk to him. Excuse me. Okay, okay, okay. okay. Maybe you can speak to him. Good. But, but, but through the door. And you don't, you don't want to talk to your idol through a door looking like this. <laughs> Change him something nice. I'll, I'll tell him you're here. Okay, good. All right. Matt, I know he's dead, but boy, I wish I was Bones. <laughs> and so, Eli, 
You shall be. There she comes, Eli. Mom home? Juliet. <laughs> he said he'd shake hands with you. Then after that, you just leave him alone, okay? Oh, yes. Yeah, sure. All right. Come over here. Ready? Ah, there it is. <laughs> okay. That's it, Julie. <laughs> I gotta go show Angela. Oh my gosh, I got a glove. <laughs> I think I'm a man now. <laughs> Good, Eli, because we have some major problems here. Well, at least I'll have my memories. <laughs> Sorry, Eli. One more time. Say, Matt. Oh, look, no. Norman. See, I talked to the guys, and they're really not interested. I mean, it's nothing personal. It's just, it's just they find you very offensive. <laughs> <laughs> I said it. I'm, I'm sorry. Oh, that's funny. Don King found me rather charming. Don King? Don King, the, uh, the fight promoter? The guy who was involved with the Jacksons tour? Yeah. Yeah, he's uh, in my apartment, uh, waiting to talk to you. Oh, I get it. I'm supposed to go, Don King, he's my hero. I must rush across and see him. <laughs> Why, you go into my room and interview the dregs, right? Wrong. King figures if you're that good at fighting rock groups, he wants to use you as a talent scout. Matt, he's talking $50,000. <laughs> well, why is he in your apartment and not over here, huh? Oh, well, um, I, I kind of told him my place was your apartment. <laughs> See, I figured I'd interview him for myself, but he didn't like me either. <laughs> Look, you think I get joy out of knowing you are going to make a fortune? This must be really eating you up, huh? Look, the only reason I even told you that he was here is because you granted me a favor and giving me the first interview with the band. I am just paying you back. That's all. Fifty thousand dollars to walk across the hall? That's about ten grand a step. <laughs> Seems worthwhile. Okay, this is ten thousand, twenty, thirty. Don? Hi, uh, Don, I got it. Oh, Norman, let me, please. Don King, Matthew Burton. Matthew Burton, Don King. <laughs> me, me, me. Very, very mature, Norman. Well, what's the matter, buddy? It's not as if you don't know the guy. What do you mean? You're gonna laugh. <laughs> I doubt it. <laughs> See, I decided to do some research on the dregs, which led me to your school. You know, you can learn a lot at school. You can learn that the capital of Uruguay is Montevideo. You can learn a janitor will tell you a lot for $10. And most importantly, you can learn that the jawbone ain't connected to the drumstick. So, so what are you driving at, Norman? Matt, it's over. Well, not exactly. See, as manager of the group, being sued for $28.5 million, Norman. Yeah, and the group has to be in court on Friday.
<laughs> oh, please, just enjoy yourself here. You know, don't mind me. <laughs> but just remember, Norman, hmm? you did write an article about these guys. <laughs> So it looks like we're going down together now, Norman. <laughs> Unless, of course, you can come up with a plan to get us out of this. I don't think so. out that you interviewed skeletons. <laughs> Your career is just going to be ruined. So you're going to come up with a plan now, aren't you? Nope. Okay. No. You will. You will. <laughs> Mom's sure going to be upset about yeah. this. Yeah. writing that made them so big. Oh, okay, all right, all right. You are good. And you proved they have a future. Just, just, just let me have a future, too. Huh? Help me. Huh? Okay. I don't think you're putting anything over on me, Matthew. The truth is, I do owe you. So don't push your luck here. All right, let's get serious. There's one simple way to get rid of the dregs once and for all. Hmm? We kill them. <laughs> See, but it's got to be in a way that the bodies can't be found. Mm. Car accident. Perfect. It's got to be into the ocean. The police find their clothes, the tide gets the bodies. I like it, I like it. It feels right, it feels right. Now the only problem is where do we get a car? Uh... Oh, no, no, no. I, I just bought that car. Come on, Norman. It's got 100,000 miles on it. What's another 60 feet? Come in. Oh, Eli, come on, we're gonna go drive Norman's car up a cliff. Okay. You think I need a sweater? So there are no new developments on last night's tragedy, which claimed the lives of the local rock phenomenon, the dregs of humanity. A sea search is still on, but police have little hope of finding the bodies. All that was left were shreds of clothing and one studded leather glove. <laughs> Honey, do you want to talk about it? Not now, Mama. I'd rather be alone. <laughs> oh, this is so sad. Yeah. <laughs> I guess that means no article for Rolling Stone. Well, I still wanted one since I was the only person to ever interview the band, but 
In good conscience, I just couldn't. I mean, I don't want to cash in on the boy's misfortunes. <laughs> Whoa, look. They must have been driving awfully fast to mangle a car like that. <laughs> oh, I'm going to go check on Julie. I just hope Matthew's not taking it too hard. I'm Nina Blackwood of MTV, here with Matthew Burton. <laughs> Matthew is the former manager and the closest friend of the late, great dregs of humanity. Um, Matthew, is it all right if I call you Matt? Nina, you can call me anything you want. <laughs> Just, uh, call me before seven, huh? <laughs> yeah. Uh, well, Matthew, uh, you must be deeply shocked at the news of the tragedy. <laughs> yes. But, Nina, how could you not be shocked? And still... I'm sorry, I can't go on. <laughs> I know, we're all hurting. We're all hurting. Oh, you know, the guys... They spoke very highly of you, Nina. <laughs> I thought very highly of them. I, I met them one time backstage at the Ritz, and, uh, you know, the Bones and Wolfgang, they were clowning around. They were always the kidders, and then, and then Graves was, he was, he was the quiet one. You know, I was telling them that night that you guys, you know, you guys yeah, are the right, real... Yeah, right, right, Nina. But for those of you who didn't know them as well as I did, <clears throat> or Nina... <laughs> I'd like to read about them in my upcoming book, The Dregs of Humanity. They made us believe them. 